All right, so we're given this matrix A, and we want to figure out a real SVD of A um, in the typical form. It's not unique, so we're going to find one that minimizes the number of negative signs in U and V. And then we were, go we're going to take this matrix and find the 1, 2, infinity, and Frobenius norms, so basically all the important norms. Then we're going to find A inverse. Okay, so to determine our, um, the real SVD of A, um, basically what we're going to do, what we're going to do is first of all we need to use A transpose times A, and that's going to be useful in this. So let's start by computing that. So the non-zero singular values of A are precisely the non-zero eigenvalues of A star A, which in this case, since we're in the real case, is A transpose times A. So we compute A transpose times A. And this is just a calculation, and you get this matrix. So now we want to compute the eigenvalues of this matrix. And we know that the eigenvalues satisfy the, what, the, you have this characteristic polynomial, I believe it's called. It's a determinant of the matrix minus lambda times i. And you set that equal to 0. And then you basically solve for lambda. And the roots of this polynomial basically end up being the eigenvalues. And so, yeah, this is just linear algebra. So you do this, and you compute, and you get numbers. And the numbers sort of like work out really nicely, and you get, you get this. So the eigenvalues of A transpose times A are 50 and 200. And so the singular values of A are, let's see here, the first one is going to be the larger of the two. And we're going to take the square root, because we have to take the square root of the eigenvalues of A transpose A to get the singular values. Um, so the first one we're going to have 10 root 2 and the second one will be 5 root 2. And then of course there are no 0 singular values because 0 is not an eigenvalue of A transpose A. Okay, so we have the singular values, so that basically gives us sigma. Then we need to find U and V. Um, so we want to use these two equations. A, A times A transpose UI equals sigma I squared UI. And A transpose A times VI equals sigma I squared VI. And if we use these equations, we can figure out the UIs and the VIs. And these equations, um, these, I don't know if they're mentioned in the textbook, but you can just deduce these from um, the properties of the singular value decomposition. So anyways, uh, so this equation involves A transpose times A, and we know that already, so that's good. Now for this one, we need A times A transpose, and so we compute that, and so we get this. Okay, so now we have this matrix and this matrix, and so now we need to solve each of these equations twice for I equals 1 and I equals 2. Okay, so first let's find U1. And by the way, the order in which I find these, like, U's versus the V's, I sort of did this, like, I, I, I sort of did them in a different order when I first did this problem, and then I figured out, you, you can use the possible values of U's and V's because, of course, there's these, um, this singular value decomposition is not unique, so we have to figure out a way to choose which one is the ideal one, i.e. which one minimizes the minus signs. And I've sort of written these in an order that will make it the easiest to do this. So anyways, we start with um, 0 is this. Okay, so if A, A transpose times u1 equals sigma 1 squared u1, then moving this over to the other side, subtracting it over, means that 0 is going to be a, a transpose minus i sigma 1 squared u1. And so we just compute this, and we get this. Okay, so we want to solve, we, want, we have this system of equations which needs to be 0, so we can just row reduce this matrix. We can see that the entries in this matrix are all just like plus or minus 75, and so it easily row reduces to this. And so what this tells us is that you, so if it's this matrix, so the solution to this being zero is the same as the solution to this matrix times the vector u11, u12 to be zero. By the way, u11 and u12, those are just the two entries of the vector u1. Um, so therefore, so anyways, we, the, the, the top equation here gives us u11 equals u12. If you move this um, 
So this would be u11 minus u12 equals 0, and then you move the u12 over to the other side, and so u11 equals u12. Okay, so we can find any solutions to any, we can find any values of ui by just ensuring that u11 equals u12. Now what do we want ui to satisfy? Well, we want to minimize the number of minus signs, and we also want it to be to have norm 1, because... Um, or, yeah, we want it to be a unit vector because the vector, because the matrix U needs to be a unitary matrix, i.e. its columns need to be orthonormal, i.e. each, and, and, and for the columns to be orthonormal, certainly we need each, each column vector to have norm 1. So, we're going to set u1 to be, well, if you just set u11 equals u12 equals 1, then you get this matrix, and then in order to turn it into a unit vector, you need to divide by its norm. And so we compute this, then we get this, and then we get this. Okay, so this is going to be u1, and clearly this, th th this is nice. Um, now, we could have used, we could have set both of these equal to negative 1, and then divided by the norm, and we would have gotten u1 to be negative 1 over root 2 in the first entry and negative 1 over root 2 in the second entry. However, so that that vector would also satisfy the properties that we want. Like, it, it, would, it would also satisfy this equation up here, but all of its terms would be negative, and we're trying to minimize the number of negative signs, and so we want to go with the positive ones. Okay, so that's u1, and that's in fact the reason that we used u, we found u1 first instead of v1, is that um, we're going to have these two positive entries here. Now when we move on to v1, uh, we basically we do the same thing, but here we have a transpose a instead of a, a transpose. So we have this equation, and then we solve it, we get this, then we row reduce it, and we get this. So... For v11 and v12 to satisfy this equation, i.e. this being equal to 0, we want 4 times v11 to be negative 3 times v12. So let's just choose a solution. Let's say v11 is negative 3 and v12 is positive 4. Then that will satisfy this equation, and in order to make sure that it has norm 1, we divide by the norm of that vector. So we set v1 to be this vector divided by its 2 norm, and so you do some math and you get this vector. Okay, and again, using negative v1 would also satisfy this equation and it would have norm 1, um, but negative v1 would be positive 3 over 5 in the first entry and negative 4 over 5 in the second entry, so it wouldn't change the number of minus signs. And so if we go with this route, then... Um, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter whether we use positive v1 or negative v1, because the number of minus signs will still be the same. We'll still get one minus sign from v1, and we'll get no minus signs from u1. Um, but in fact, we, we, we aren't, we aren't free to choose either v1 or negative v1. We have to choose the one which satisfies the equation av1 equals sigma1 u1. So if we compute this, if we choose v1 the way that we've done up here, then it turns out that av1 is equal to sigma1 u1. And so this is indeed the one that we want to choose in order to uh, match with u1 having both positive entries. So basically the thing here is that if we would have gone with negative v1 here, and gone with positive 3 over 5 and negative 4 over 5, then in order that then this computation would be the same, but we'd have minus signs, and then we'd end up with u1 having both of its entries being negative. And so then we'd have one negative sign in v1 and two negative signs in u1, which is worse than this scenario that we have right now, where we only have one negative sign overall. So therefore, we have found the desired vector v1, and it matches with the desired vector u1.
All right, so now let's move on to V2. Now, in this case, it turns out V2, um, we should find this first, um, and we'll see why. So anyways, so we set 0 equal to A transpose A minus I sigma 2 squared V2, and so we get this thing. And we can row reduce this matrix to get this. And so moving this thing over to the other side, we end up with 3 times v21 is equal to 4 times v22. And so let's just take a simple um, solution, v21 equals 4 and v22 equals 3, and divide by the norm of that vector, and we end up with this vector. So again, negative v2 would also work, but we want all positive entries. That would be ideal, so this works. And then for u2, we have this equation, and so we get this, and that will easily row reduce, and we'll end up with this matrix, and so u21 equals negative u22, and so let's choose u21 to be positive, and u22 to be negative 1, then we will set u2 to be this vector. And again, negative u2 would always work in this case, but u2 and negative u2 have the same number of minus signs, so we want to choose the one that will match with the choice of v2 that gave us two positive entries in v2. So, we can check that the v2 that we, ch that we chose, i.e. 4 over 5 and 3 over 5, will give us, um, will give us um, sigma 2 u2. And so we've made the ideal choice. Okay, and so now we can just wrap up this problem. So, we let u be, ha its columns will be u1 and u2, so it's just this. v will have its columns v1 and v2, which will be this. And then sigma will have the singular values on the diagonal, so it's this. Therefore, a equals u sigma v transpose, which is just this. And again, we've, we had to transpose v here, but, oh, well, I guess v ended up being symmetric here, so it doesn't matter. And so therefore, we have found the singular value decomposition of A. Alright, so that's part A, and then moving on to part C, um, so the one norm is just, okay, well this, 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 this should really be 11, 5, this should really be a column vector, but, uh, yeah, the one norm is the max of the one norms of the column vectors, and so it's, it's a max of 12 and 16, and so it's 16, um, the infinity norm of a matrix is the max of the um, one norms of the rows, the row vectors, and so it's the max of these two, and so it's 15. The Frobenius norm, I think you can compute this using the SVD, maybe, but here I've just computed it directly because it's an easy enough computation. Um, oh yeah, that happens to be sigma 2, so I doubt that's a coincidence. Um, but anyways, you can compute the Frobenius norm this way. Anyway, as for the 2 norm, we know that um, the 2 norm of a matrix is the square root of the largest eigenvalue of A transpose times A. That's something that we've learned. And so, by part A, 200 is the largest eigenvalue of A transpose A, and therefore, the singular, or the, the 2 norm of A is just the square root of 200, which is 10 root 2. And so that gives us all of the uh, norms, and that gives us part C. And now finally, we are on to part D. So, we want to compute A inverse. Now we know that U and V star, so I guess this is really V transpose, but whatever. It's the same thing since these are real matrices. These matrices are unitaries, are unitary, so they're inverses. Yeah, no, this should actually be U and V are unitary, so there shouldn't be no transpose there. U and V are unitary, so their inverses are U transpose and V transpose. 
Um, sigma is diagonal with non-zero entries on the diagonal, therefore it's invertible, and its inverse is given by this matrix. So, because if you take this matrix and you multiply by sigma, then in the first entry you'll get sigma 1 times 1 over sigma 1, which gives you 1, and in the second entry you'll get sigma 2 times 1 over sigma 2, which will be sigma 2. So, clearly this matrix multiplied by capital sigma will give you the identity matrix, and therefore it's... Um, the inverse. Okay, so if we take A and multiply by V sigma inverse U transpose, well, remember A is U sigma V transpose, and so we can make that substitution, and then V transpose V, well, V transpose is V inverse, so this becomes the identity, so we just have U times sigma times sigma inverse times U transpose, and these cancel, and U transpose is U inverse, so these cancels, and so we get I. Um, okay, so A times this matrix is the identity, and A is a product of invertible matrices, and so it's invertible, and so we therefore have, if, if you take this equation here, multiply by A inverse on both sides, you get that this matrix is A inverse. So A inverse equals V sigma inverse U transpose, and then we can just write this out here, and then we reduce it a little bit using some arithmetic and we get to this and this completes the exercise. Now note that this matrix, um, what what was A again? A was, uh, let me, yeah, A is, negative 2, 11, negative 10, 5. Negative 2, 11, negative 10, 5. Negative 2, 11, negative, negative 2, 11, negative 10, 5. So if you take this matrix A, and you find the determinant of this, the absolute value of the determinant of this matrix, you'll get negative 10 minus negative 121. No, no. It's negative 10 minus negative 110, so that'll give you positive 100. And so this 1 over 100, that's just 1 over the determinant of A. And then... Yeah, no, it's just 1 over the determinant of A. And then here we take negative 2 and 5 and we flip them, and we take 10 and 11 and we minus them. And so this gives us, that th this is a formula that we know from linear algebra for finding inverses of 2 by 2 matrices. So this indeed gives us A inverse, and so we are done.